put your effort and concentration into playing to your potential to be the best that you can be. You do those things, gentlemen, and I guarantee you, at the end of the game, we will be there. Oh, yeah! Today we're going to ask the question, is it time to get out of the stands and into the game? I'm not Tom Hanks or Gene Hackman or Samuel Jackson, but it's been my prayer that when I'm done today, you'll feel like Rocky at the end, ready to get out of the stands, into the game, and fully embrace what God has for you. When I was eight years old, my parents signed me up for soccer, and uh, boy, I was the cutest little eight-year-old soccer player, <laughs> fresh with Argyle socks to match my orange and green uniform. Well, as soon as soccer season ended, I thought, well, what's next? Basketball. So they signed me up for basketball, and then baseball. And this was my thing. Every year, soccer, basketball, baseball, year in and year out, this was my routine. There was something missing, though. There was something more I longed for. And, and I found out in middle school what that was because my, my friends longed for it, too. And it was football. Today, there's lots of opportunities for peewee football, but in the 80s in Monterey, there wasn't. So we dreamt of high school and what it would be like to be on that high school football team. And so in preparation, we began pickup games. I went to Pacific Grove Middle School, and we went out to the field, and we had our pickup games there. Uh, I was a, a smaller guy, so I was not going to be a lineman, so the, the spot they put me because I was kind of fast was defensive back. And my job was to prevent the wide receiver from getting into the end zone, and I was pretty good at it because I was fast and feisty. Well, I can remember one Friday afternoon, we had a game, and my job was again to protect the end zone, to prevent this receiver from getting the ball at all costs. Well, I was a small guy, as I said, and he was a little bit bigger than me. Um, he also seemed to be a little faster than me. Well, anyway, he got a couple steps on me, and I was trailing behind him. And, and I looked back, and I saw the quarterback just loft this pretty spiral arc right over my head, which isn't hard to do because I was very small, and it landed right in his hands. And I just had this sinking feeling in my gut. Oh. I just gave up a touchdown. But even in middle school, I was determined. I was like, there's no way he's scoring on me. So I turned, took a few steps to try to catch up to him, and I dove at his legs. I wrapped my arms around his legs, and he kept running. <laughs> Unfortunately, what the result was, was the bone of my humerus sticking out the side of my arm. So for the next three months, this is what I looked like. This was my introduction to football. My dreams of high school football went away because there was no way my parents were going to let me play football. So as a four foot ten, 100 pound freshman in high school, I did the next best thing. I ran cross country. So I was on the cross-country team, and I did pretty well. No one ever came out to watch our meets. It was just us out in the middle of nowhere running. <laughs> but Friday nights, Friday nights we came to the field. We sat in the stands, and we cheered on our football team, which was pretty good. Our coach was a former NFL player who just did wonders with the team. 
And I, along with hundreds of other fans, sat and cheered. But something was missing. It wasn't the same as when I played soccer and basketball and baseball. When I had people there cheering for me. When I was part of what was going on on the field or on the court. Fast forward to 1998. I'm invited to come to Shoreline Community Church at Pacific Grove High School. And I found myself there sitting in the stands again. I found myself coming and sitting in the stands of the PG High Gym. Those stands right there. And I can remember sitting back and watching the game unfold in front of me. There was the pastor and the worship team, and the ushers and the hospitality people, the, the children's ministry workers, all playing their part. And I sat in the bleachers, content. One Sunday, Pastor Howie got up front and he said, as you know, we meet in a high school gym. We turn this from a athletic facility into a worship center every week. We've got a team of dedicated people working on this, but the team's tired. They need reinforcements. We need some new people to come in and help make this happen. It was that day that I actually got up out of the stands and I came forward. I signed my name on a clipboard that said, I'm in. I'm going to help make this happen. Now let's go back to 1988. I'd had two years of cross country, and I said, you know what? That's it. I'm done. I'm tired of running around in the hills by myself. I'm playing football. And so I joined the high school football team. And, and it was everything that I had hoped it would be. But an interesting thing that I found is that somewhere between the stands and the game was this gathering of people along the side. It was called the sidelines. I found that even though I had decided at that time I was getting in the game, the coach thought differently. Because he realized that I still had a little bit of work to do. Because you see, even though I had dreamt of playing high school football, even though I'd watched Saturday college games for years and Sunday NFL games for years. And even though I played my pickup games on the field, I didn't know the playbook. Uh, I didn't know how the team was run. I didn't know the personalities of my teammates. And so I found myself on the sidelines. I want to take this moment to, to pause and to say, as we translate this into the church, Whenever you try to take an analogy from the world and apply it to the church, there's going to be some holes in there. So please, just a little bit of grace with that. Because this isn't a game. This is much more serious than that. And the stands can look different to different people. And also, it's okay to be in the stands. There's times of our lives where that's exactly where we need to be. You see, of those stands at Pacific Grove High School, when I was coming to church, I was introduced to Jesus. And it was because I was in the stands that I gave my life to Jesus. And that all that has happened since then has unfolded because I was in the stands. So I want to give you permission today to, to be in the stands if that's where God wants you to be. But ask the question, is it time to get out of the stands and into the game? The sidelines in football are a clear place for people who are ready to get in the game. People who are maybe preparing to get in the game or are out for a season. There's people who are out on the side because they hurt themselves. So they're on the team, they were in the game, and now they're back out on the sidelines. That could be the same case in the church as well. There could be a time of your life where you're in, you're on the team, you're committed, but for whatever reason, right now, 
It's time to be on the sidelines. I want to give you permission as well to say, okay, this is where God has me right now. Maybe you have a a personal issue that you're dealing with. Maybe you have a family that's taking all of your time and your ministry is there. It could be lots of different things. But there's no shame in being on the sideline as long as your goal is to get in the game. If you're just content sitting it out and watching from a little bit closer, then I think you're still missing it. I think there's more to it. For me, being on the sideline of that high school football team was about me learning. It was about me figuring out the playbook. It was about me catching up to my teammates who had been doing this for a couple of years together. In the church, that might be something like our Shoreline 411 class that's coming up next Sunday. This is a a class that we have that will tell you about the church. It will give you the information, the 411 on Shoreline. Maybe you're on the sidelines because you don't know where to go or how to get plugged in. But getting in the game might mean attending that class. That's next Sunday after third service, one o'clock in the cafe. Maybe you're on the sidelines, you've given your life to Jesus and you haven't yet taken that next step. That could be the next step to getting baptized. And next Sunday as well at one o'clock, we have a baptism class. Maybe that's one thing while you're on the sidelines that you can do before fully getting in the game. Maybe you're on the sidelines because you haven't necessarily committed to Shoreline Community Church. We have quarterly membership classes that you can come to to hear more about really what this church is about and if this church is the right church for you. It'd be a shame to sit on the sidelines for years at the wrong church when there's another church that's better suited for you, that you can jump right in and you can serve and get involved with. But today we're talking about the game. With permission to be in the stands, permission to be in the sidelines, my hope is and my prayer has been that many of you will be praying about if it's time to get out of the stands and into the game. Let's start by reading from Ephesians 4, verses 14 through 16. And it says, Then we will no longer be infants, tossed back and forth by the waves, and blown here and there by every wind of teaching, and by the cunning and craftiness of people and their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. From him the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. I could probably come up with five sermons out of that small passage. But what I want to talk about is growing to maturity and the body building itself up. Because I believe a great way to get out of the stands and into the game is to join a growth group. A growth group is a smaller grouping of people within the church that allows for sharing life with one another. It allows for encouragement. It it allows for accountability. It allows for study of God's word. We have a short video I'd love to have you see that'll give you just a, a glimpse of what growth groups look like. I attend a growth group because Shoreline is a very big church, and if I don't attend a growth group, I don't have anyone to say hi to on Sunday. This is where I meet people. I've learned we're all human. Um, I'm not the only one with difficulties in my life. It gives us other people that believe what we believe to turn to and to help each other with questions that we might have about our faith. We've gotten to know several people closely, which has really been a joy. And it's helped us really enjoy the church better. When I first started in the growth group, I was still relatively new, like in my faith. Um, so kind of 
getting some accountability and a lot of answers and you know a lot of questions as well um, that have been really beneficial and just a great support group of people who are there for me for everything um, for things related to my faith or things just in life in general um, and that's been just pretty huge to really get um, a really close-knit group of friends that um, I know I can come to for anything. Hebrews 10, 24 through 26 says, And let us consider how we can spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. Gathering together for a church service is fantastic. And it's my prayer that you would seek this out every week as a thing that you, you want, that you need, that you long for. But the truth is, as we look to spur one another on toward love and good deeds and encourage one another, that's difficult to do on a Sunday morning or Monday night. As we have 30 seconds to greet someone, it's a little difficult to ask them how their life is going, to, to help them through their challenges, to, to spend an extensive amount of time praying for one another. You see, church services aren't designed for that, but growth groups are. Maybe for you, the step out of the stands and into the game is to join a growth group. Maybe it's to join a Bible study. See, for me, as I decided to play football, one of the things that I realized was that I needed to learn the playbook. And while this is a kind of a silly analogy, this really is the playbook for our lives. This is God's instruction and directions for us. Maybe for some of us, this is our starting point, that, that we don't know his word. And how can we live according to his direction if we don't know it? We have plenty of Bible studies here. We have men's Bible studies Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday mornings, early morning in the cafe. We have women's Bible studies that go through seasons throughout the year, both on Tuesday nights and Wednesday mornings. We have our precept upon precept Bible study that's both in the evening and in the morning. We just finished a six-week frameworks study that we're going to do again most hopefully, and there's going to be plenty more of these opportunities for you. There's lots of chances for you to learn God's Word in community with other people. I would recommend you check out our website, shorelinechurch.org, go to the Grow tab, and then go down to Growth Groups or Bible Studies. Then I want to read now from Romans 12. Romans 12 is also a passage of Scripture that we could just spend months on. But, but I'm going to look at just a few verses. It's Romans 12, 3 through 8. It says, For the, by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with for sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts, according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. And if it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. Sometimes we can look at this passage and say, well, I don't have the gift of giving, so I won't give. Don't have the gift of serving, so I won't serve. Don't have the gift of mercy, so I'm merciless. But the truth is, God has given us all gifts. God has designed us in a way, and then once we become followers of Jesus, he supernaturally gives us gifts that we can use for his work. I truly believe that one of the best ways to get out of the stands and into the game is to begin using those gifts in service. When I decided that day to get out of the stands and help set up the gym, everything changed. I no longer sat back and watched the game. 
I was part of it. It took on a whole new meaning. Mark 10, 45 says, For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. Christians are called to follow the example set by Jesus. Whether it's him sitting at the table with his disciples and washing their feet and then saying, I've washed your feet. Now you do the same. Our, our job is to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, to see the example that he set for us and to strive to reach that standard. We're never going to get there. We're not Jesus. We're, we're nowhere close. But that doesn't mean we give up. It doesn't mean we don't put in the effort. It doesn't mean we seek to follow his example. And Jesus, although he is God, served. Shouldn't we be serving as well? I think one of the hard things sometimes is I don't know where to do that. I don't know how to be used by God. Either I don't feel like I have gifting, I don't feel like I have anything to offer, or I just don't know where the open doors are. Well, here at Shoreline, we, we do this thing called a spiritual gifts class, and it's done quarterly. We just finished one up a few weeks ago. We'll have another one in, in another month and a half. But you don't have to wait for the class because online on our website, you can check out our spiritual gifts assessment. And while I do think the class is very important and would strongly encourage you all to go, you can get started before the class by taking the assessment. And what we do in this assessment is we look at what we call is your, your shape. And shape means spiritual gifts, heart, abilities, personality, and experience. Because all these pieces fit into where you can best be used by God. When I started serving from, uh, in Set Up and Tear Down, I got to tell you, my heart wasn't there. Like, I, I didn't really desire to be a setup guy. That, that wasn't my thing, but I had the ability to do so. And sometimes we'll take one of those pieces, we'll, we'll go where our heart is, we'll go where our ability is, we'll go where our personality leads us, or we'll go with our experiences. When we can combine them all, and that's what we do with this spiritual gifts assessment. You answer some questions, it comes up with some computations, and then our staff will go through that with you. And we'll talk through where you would be the best fit. And maybe your abilities lead you to be a teacher. And your heart is for elementary school children. We put those two together and you can go work in our Anchor Bay Children's Ministry. Maybe your heart is for those who are hurting and your personality is one that lends to small groups. And maybe you've had some grief that you're dealing with in your life. Maybe you take your heart, you take your personality, you take your experience and you get involved in our grief share. Maybe on the same foot you have dealt with divorce, with the same heart, the same personality, and you now get involved in our divorce ministry. There's lots of opportunities for you. If you take the first step to get out of the stands and get into the game, and the first step when it, with this is getting online, taking the spiritual gifts assessment, and then seeing where God would lead you. Matthew 9.37 says, Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. What he was talking about is that there's a lot of people out in this world who do not know Jesus. And there's a small number of people who are trying to reach them all. He goes on to say, pray that the Lord of the harvest will send workers into the fields. This applies to us today as well. I think we often think that the, the work of the ministry is the church staff. And while it is to some extent, truly pastor's job is to equip the body to do the work of the ministry. It's the staff's job to help find where to plug you in and how to connect you. 
It's the staff's job to, to train you and to equip you and encourage you and empower you. Romans 10, 13 through 14 says, Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is exciting news. All it takes for someone to spend eternity with God is for them to call on the name of the Lord. Say, I need you. Say, I'm a sinner. I thank you for the, the gift of your son dying for my sins. I receive that gift. But it's interesting how Paul continues this. He says, but how then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? While the good news, the gospel message is a wonderful one, if people don't hear it, it does them no good. If they have to stumble upon a church to get that, chances are they won't. But if the body of Christ takes seriously the task of sharing their faith with this world, that opens up amazing, exciting possibilities. Here at Shoreline, we call that organic outreach. Organic outreach is simply sharing your faith in natural ways. We just finished two trainings, one on Sunday morning and one on Wednesday night. We have a, another conference coming November 10th through 12th, which will be three days of equipping and training this body and believers from around the world to share their faith in natural ways. Maybe your way to get out of the stands and into the game is to get this training. The truth is you don't need the training to share your faith. And you can share your faith by simply sharing what God is doing in your life. Sharing where God has taken you. Sharing peace that you have from God. Sharing the strength that you get through your difficult times. Each of us has a way to reach others right where we are. But we will do our part to help equip you to do even more. I believe one of the hard parts is we don't exactly know where to go, where to start, what opportunities to take. And James 1.5 says, If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault. And it will be given to you. Ask God. Ask God for wisdom. How do you want to use me? What do you want me to do? What do you want me to say? Where do you want me to go? God will honor your request. God will use you. And when he does, you get to experience what it's like to be in the game and part of what God is doing. And it is exciting when you see someone in your life who comes to know Jesus for the first time. It does feel like Rocky as he climbs those steps. Like, this is amazing stuff. I can't believe I get to be part of this. It is incredible. It is way better than sitting in the stands and watching other people take part. Last night I was watching the Warriors Thunder game. Any Warriors fans? All right. That was an exciting game. It was interesting because on TNT, they did a breakdown where they said they, they went into the little coach's huddle and we got to hear what the coaches said. And both coaches pumped up their teams. Both coaches said, here's exactly what you need to do to win this game. They, they kind of sounded like Samuel L. Jackson. And I guarantee you, if you do these things, at the end, you'll be winners. Well, luckily for those of us who are Warriors fans, the Warriors listened and the Thunder didn't. <laughs> like, they were told by Billy Donovan exactly what to do. They didn't do it. They gave up like three turnovers in the last two minutes. He said, hold on to the ball. They didn't. 
He said, be patient, take good shots. And they tossed him up from like they were Steph Curry, right? They, they didn't listen. James 1.22 says, do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. I don't think anyone would debate that God wants to use us, that God has a plan for us, that God has gifted us, and that God has a, a plan for us. It'd be easy for us to hear that and say, well, I go to church on Sunday, so I've got it covered. The truth is, in my early years at Shoreline, that's what I did. I sat in the bleachers in the back and deceived myself into thinking I was living the Christian life. I wasn't. I was sitting in the back, cheering every once in a while, clapping my hands. And I was watching the game unfold in front of me. Ever since that day that I stepped out of the stands and I said, I'm in. God's taken hold of my life in a whole new way. In 1999, when I finally said, I'll do this, I had no idea that today I'd be a pastor, that I'd be sharing my story with you in this message that God's given me. No idea at all. I was content where I was, but I've had this dis distinct pleasure to be part of what God is doing. I've had so many opportunities to be firsthand, front row in it, as God is changing lives. It is amazing. Now, not everybody is going to become a pastor. Church wouldn't be that effective if that happened. We need people with different gifts in different communities, in different areas, in different workspaces, in different ministries to do the work of the body. So again, knowing that for some of us, being in the stands is where we need to be right now. Maybe you're still seeking, trying to find out if this whole Jesus thing is real and what it means. Maybe you're on the sidelines nursing an injury right now. Rehabilitate it. Get it up. Get it fixed. Maybe you're working on learning the playbook, but, but yearn to be in the game. Ultimately, my encouragement is to take action to take a step wherever you are toward getting in the game. Maybe it's attending next week's Shoreline 411 class or baptism class. Maybe for you it's joining a growth group or a Bible study. Maybe it's taking the spiritual gifts assessment and then serving in a ministry. Maybe it's sharing your faith. Pastor Kevin often says here that we don't meet you halfway. We, we ask you to go 10%, and then we'll meet you 90%. Well, today, we've done that. Out in the courtyard, we have a lot of ministries that are being represented. And for most of you, you actually have to walk through there to get to your car. <laughs> I want to encourage you to stop at some of those booths. Now, I'm probably going to miss one, so you'll have to go and check them out. But we've got a Glacia Shoreline, Community Outreach, Global Outreach, Women's Ministry, Care, Spiritual Growth, Prayer, Baptism, Organic Outreach, Children's Ministry, Middle School Ministry, High School Ministry. There's something for everyone, either to get involved with, to, to learn and to grow, or to get involved in to help and serve. But today's your chance. If you do what I'm encouraging you to do, your life will be changed. It will be completely different. You will have experiences that you could not even imagine. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for stirring in me a desire to get out of the stands and into the game and allowing me to be part of some amazing things over the last 17 years. Father, I know that there are people here that haven't yet been able to taste that. Father, I pray for each person here that they would 
they would embrace this opportunity to get out of the stands and into the game. For those who are in the stands because they're still seeking, Lord, would you speak to them, please? Place people in their lives who could reach them, could share the truth of your love with them. Father, for those on the sidelines who are hurting or in a difficult place right now or just managing their family, Lord, would you give them exactly what they need to not only endure this season, Lord, but to make the most of it. And Father, for those who are fully capable and ready to get in the game, would you make those opportunities known? Would you grant wisdom? Would you give direction? Would you reveal opportunities? Father, I pray that through this body, you would continue in ever-increasing ways to impact this world. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I'd like to hand off to our military and online communities. And I have one announcement for you, and that is that Pacific Grove campus is celebrating their first anniversary. And you've got 24 minutes to get over there for the kickoff of their celebration barbecue. If you're a little late, that'd be fine as well. But they would love to have you. We are one church in multiple locations, and really, there's a great place for you there to help celebrate with our team. I would love for you also to go by the courtyard, stop at some of the booths, talk to the ministries, meet some of the ministry leaders right here, right now. Take that next step in getting out of the stands and in the game. If you need prayer, we've got people up front that would love to pray for you. And if you've never been by our Connection Center, they'd love to, to meet you, to welcome you, to offer you a gift and tell you a little bit about our church. But more than anything, I, I beg you, Ask God, is it time to get out of the stands and into the game? I know for many of us it is. God bless you. Have a great day.